When she finished school, Nano loved being part of the Parisian scene, the bell of the ball. Party till the wee hours of the early morning. It was the news of the death of their father in 1746 that brought Nano and her sister home from France to Valley Griffin. After her father's death, Nano, Anne, and their mother relocated to Dublin. Anne became involved in helping the poor, but Nano continued mixing with the wealthy of society. Her lifestyle took a dramatic turn when she discovered that Anne had sold expensive material that Nano had brought from France. The proceeds were used to buy food for a starving family. This caused Nano to reflect on the futility of her own life. She wondered how to devote her life to the service of the poor and desolate of Irish society. Life was truly changing for Nano with the death of her mother and her beloved sister Anne. She moved back to Valley Griffin to live with her brother David at the ancestral home. Look after the children. Nana was haunted by the poverty of disturbing, ragged, and uneducated Irish children. She had to do something about it. With the cry of the poor echoing in her heart, she entered a convent in France to pray for the poor and neglected Irish. Through this, she, she realized that she needed to go back to Ireland. She went and stayed with her brother Joseph and his wife Frances in Cork. Secretly, she rented a mud cabin and invited local children to come and learn the basics of their faith and learn how to read and write. Joseph only realized what she was doing when he was approached to enroll his child in Miss Nagel's class. Initially, she, he feared for Nano and his family, but her persistence and pleading her cause for the children made him relent. He and his wife Frances promised their support. Frances also went on to help in teaching the poor children. Nano first started teaching girls only. But Frances saw that boys needed education as well. And after pleading, a school for 40 boys opened. They were taught by a master whom Nano paid with her own money. Within nine months, 200 children were packed into two or more cabin schools in Cobb Lane. After learning of her courageous undertaking, Nano's Uncle Joseph gave financial support. With her life in danger due to penal laws, she still took the risk, giving everything personally and financially. The success of Nano's school in St. Finbar's Parish, Cork, led to 200 children being accommodated in a two-story building in Philpot Lane, North Cork. Now, Nana was concerned about a way for provi of providing for children and their education after she was gone. Between 1755 and 1771, Nano had established seven schools, all from her own funds. I hope the Almighty will direct what is most to his honor and glory. When she and her sister Anne went to school in France, 
They were taught by the Ursuline sisters. She dreamed that the Ursuline sisters would bring her schools into the future. She had made provisions for the sisters to come from France to help with her work. The work started on the building of a convent for them in Cork. Today it is known as South Presentation Cork, Ireland. The Ursulines took possession of this convent on September the 18th 1771 and began operating in January 1972. 1772. When Nano realized the Ursulines were not allowed to leave convent grounds, a suggestion to her to start her own congregation of sisters made her rethink the future. Nano gathered around her a group of like-minded women who would dedicate their lives to the service of the poor. On Christmas Eve, 1775, Nano Nagel began her own congregation. Because Nano always saw the Sacred Heart as a symbol of love and compassion, she named this new congregation the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. This congregation would later come to be known as the Sacred Heart of Mary. Without financial support, she ended up begging in the streets, suffering abuse and misunderstanding, but she and her companions worked passionately for the poor and the desolate in the city of Cork. It is all in the power of the Almighty. Dressed as simple women, this little congregation attended St. Finbarn Church, Cork City. Nano and her companions decided to wear a simple dress to identify them to the people they served. Two years later, the four sisters vowed, in the presence of Bishop Butler of Cork, to dedicate their lives to God and to continue the work they had begun. In 1780, still under the cover of darkness because of the penal laws, they took possession of their first convent in Cove Lane. To celebrate, they invited 50 poor beggars to dinner on Christmas Day. The practice continued for the rest of her life. Carrying a lantern, she continued to minister joyfully to the poor and sick in the alley of Cork. She became known as the Lady with the Lantern. She endured trials, being cursed in the streets with her schools looked down upon as centers of evil. Nano's health was declining, but she continued to work for the poor until her physical strength was no more. She died on April 26th, 1784. At her death, she had spent only nine years as a religious sister, but she had devoted a total of 29 years of her life dedicated to the care of the poor. Love one another as you have hitherto done. Look after the children. Nana was a pioneer of Catholic education in Ireland's darkest days. Bishop Malin of Cork sought approval from Rome for this little congregation. In 1791, the rule of Nana's congregation was finally approved by Pope Pius VI. It was then that the congregational name was changed to the Sisters of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In 1793, there were five professed sisters and seven novices in the congregation. On October 2nd, 1793, two sisters left Cork for Killarney, establishing the first foundation outside of Cork. 
Anna's congregation was growing. Dublin in 1794, North Presentation Cork in 1797, Waterford in 1798, Kilkenny in 1880, Carlow in 1811, Turles in 1817, Wexford 1818, Castlemer in 1829, Galway 1829, and Mooncoin in 1830. Between 1803 and 1838, 66 young women joined the Presentation Sisters begun by this incredible woman. If I could be of service in saving souls in any part of the globe, I would willingly do all in my power. Between 1789 and 1850, convents and schools were established every two to three years. Nano's spirit was moving. She had global vision. She sent catechists to the West Indies in 1770 to share the word of God with people there. A convent was established in St. John's, Newfoundland in 1833. Four sisters made the long ocean journey from Waterford across the Atlantic Ocean. This journey took almost six weeks. It took so long for word of their arrival to get to the sisters in Ireland, they thought they were lost at sea and actually had a funeral service for them back in Ireland. <laughs> These sisters were the first English-speaking sisters in Newfoundland. Nano's legacy and that of the Irish has contributed to this island's education and music, so much part and parcel of the life of the Newfoundland and Labrador people. For the first 10 years, the sisters had no permanent residence. They had very little and lived a frugal life and were the first to have a training school for women teachers who then went back to teach in island outport schools. From 1833 to 1911, 92 Presentation Sisters came from Ireland to minister in Newfoundland. We do not know what is best for us, and so we ought to be resigned to the divine will. was built for the sisters on Long's Hill in St. John's. Their permanent home and nearby school were destroyed in the Great Fire of 1846. They then lived with the Three Mercy Sisters in their convent on Military Road for five years. Just a little note about another group of amazing women. This group, our own Mercy Sisters, was founded by Catherine McCauley in 1831. Three sisters came to St. John's in 1842. Their mission was in nursing and education. The congregation grew to serve throughout the island. Theirs was a priceless gift to many. They continue today in their service to the people of the province. Now back to our story. Between 1850 and 1853, a convent was erected at Cathedral Square this is now the mother house of the Presentation Sisters of Newfoundland. The congregation grew and schools and convents were established around the island. Nano's dream was truly alive. Presentation Sisters, whose first ministry in Newfoundland was in education, today have a different direction. In keeping with Nano's vision, they continue to serve the poor, for example, at the Lantern in St. John's, they also ministered to parishes and worked in the field of spirituality. There is no greater happiness in the world than to be in unity. Today, Presentation Sisters in the Ministry of Spirituality give expression to the new story. 
looking at our world and all of creation in a new and vibrantly spiritual way. The Lantern Spiritual Center on Barnes Road is an expression of faithfulness to mission, a mission that promotes spirituality, community, and justice. The Gathering Place, another center set up with the Presentation and Mercy Sisters, exists to meet the needs of those who have fallen through the cracks in our society. The sisters now serve on six continents and 17 countries. In addition to the sisters here in Newfoundland and Labrador and Ontario, they are in Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, England, USA, Africa, Latin America, India, Tasmania, Pakistan, Philippines, Slovakia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Palestine. The presentation way of life expresses our yearning for the union with the living God, present in the mystery, in the unfolding of creation, in its magnificence, pain, and woundedness, which is the presentation constitution. Here ends our story, but the story continues. Nano continues to inspire. May she inspire all of us to live for the good of all the world. During her lifetime, Nano sent sisters out in mission. For example, she sent some to the West Indies to teach catechism. Many years later, sisters from our province can be found there as they continue to serve the people of the West Indies. Nano's message is far-reaching. In the United Nations, two young women from Zimbabwe have a voice. Their presence there made possible by support from this congregation. We women here tonight are members of the Port of Port Associates of the Presentation Sisters. Men also are welcome to journey with us as we continue to follow in the footsteps of this amazing woman. We are from different communities, but share a common dream with the Presentation Associates throughout the world in the care of our families, our communities, and our fragile world. We are here tonight as associates, following the direction of the Presentation Congregational Gathering in 218 in Ireland. From these directions, we are called to be more aware of the Spirit of God, present and active in all that exists. We're called also to make Nano known as much as we possibly can. We are called to participate in the universal message of Jesus, to answer the question, what would Nano do, is to answer the question, what would Jesus do? Some of us here tonight have been members of the Port Port Association, Presentation Associates, since its formation in 2003. If you desire to join us, to join this group, there will be a period of formation discernment and contemplation before making a commitment to serve under Nano's direction. And to finish up this evening, I'd like to read you a poem written by Corrine Murray, a sister of the presentation um, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The title is Keepers of the Flame. In the quiet places of the heart and crossroads, Daughters and friends of Nano tend lantern fire in word and deed to spread anew the charism of hospitality for Earth and all her people. Hospitality and presence, our dance of welcome and care. As daughters and sons of Nano, we step in time to lift up the wounded to be with the broken, to ignite sparks of hope in worlds gone dark, and coax joy into the hearts of our sisters and brothers.
You have just heard the story of Nano Nagel told by us, the Port of Port Presentation Associates. Jermaine White, who was the visionary, wrote our script and felt that it would be beneficial to have a PowerPoint presentation of photos to paint clearly Nano's story and her influence on us today through the presentation sisters. And as you know, a picture paints a thousand words. We begin with a coloring book of pictures designed by Sister Marilyn Doyle, retired teacher and artist. She lives in St. John's. We asked her to do these especially for primary school children so that they can have fun coloring them and learning about Nano as well. So we have them at St. Stephen's Parish, so they're the first pilot project for this. As you can see, Nano's uh, date of birth is given and a picture of Nano with two students. Now this picture of Nana was very familiar in many of the convents or, uh, in, the, in Newfoundland. And after here, after we finish here, you can see that picture out in the, out where we're having refreshments. This is Nano's uh, baptism. Now picture the scene, but in her time, it would not be in a church, as Catholics were forbidden to practice their faith. More than likely, it was at her home. Her first communion, it looks like she's in church, receiving communion from the priest. But remember, she couldn't do that. It had to be done in secrecy. Sister Marilyn wanted to point out that Nano received all the sacraments and was a devout Catholic, uh, even from childhood. Now here we see how fun-loving she was. She was a real tomboy, apparently. And remember, her family was very wealthy, so she wanted for nothing. She had the best of everything. And here's another picture. Nano loved the Blackwater River with her brothers and sisters. Now Nana was an avid learner. Now although she did learn her ABCs at the Hedge School, but she and her sister, as you know, her sister Anne, were smuggled to Paris, France to learn from the Ursula sisters. Now, once Nana finished school, she continued to live in Paris, where she became very popular, attending all social events. But after a while, she realized that there was more to life than these parties. And we learned earlier about the turning point in her life. Now, here, we really fast forward Nana's life. Remember, this is a coloring book. She realized that she wanted to help the uneducated Irish children, and so she started her schools for girls. Later, parents came to her pleading to take their sons, and she did. Now this last picture of the coloring book invites children to ponder very serious questions. Questions today that we as adults need to reflect and answer in our own lives. So, will you love planet Earth? Will you be kind to the poor? Will you not hurt anything? Now here, as you can see, is a very youthful picture of Nano, probably taken in Paris. As she prepared to head out to a ball. Now the next set of pictures will show some historic sites in Ireland that today are visited by tourists and pilgrims. 
So here's the Irish Great House of the 18th century where Nana was born. Next, in one of these dismal abodes, Nano Nagel began the, the establishment of the Presentation Sisters. Now remember, the last thing she wanted was to draw attention to what she was accomplishing. Here she is, begging on the street, after she had spent her fortune on the poor and destitute while making sure that the children were educated. Here she is visiting the sick with her familiar lantern. And as you know, she became known as the Lady of the Lantern. And as you can see, many, uh, many of us uh, are here tonight, including here. Now down through the years, the sisters, in reflecting on Nano, her vision and charism, highlighted her many virtues. So we see the first one here as Nano Nagel as educator. So that was prime. Next we see her as a woman of prayer. And they say she wore out her knees praying. Servant of the oppressed and the downtrodden. Woman of the Gospel, well, you heard about her devotion to the Sacred Heart, and of course, Mother Mary was in that. Woman of Global Vision, that certainly is well uh, documented. And she said, if I could be of service in saving souls in any part of the world, I would be willing to do all that is in my power Now here we have a picture of a mature nano, and that's the only one apparently that we have. <clears throat> On her deathbed, her last words were, love one another and spend yourself for the poor. Her little group of women began to grow to such an extent that of course they branched out, Ireland, England, so on, until they came until the New World, to the colony of Newfoundland. And here are the four sisters, true pioneers, who ventured across the Atlantic in 1833 in St. John's. And that was quite an adventure. So remember now, it, they look pretty solemn, don't they? Because people were taught not to smile when you took a photo. But they were very inspirational women. Oh yes, I have to say, keep that photo in mind because I'm, I'm going to make reference to it later on. Now here's a picture of the mother house in probably in the 50s or 60s. Look at the car parked in front now. People <laughs> wonder now, is it really whatever? But anyway, we're not going to go there. Maybe later. Now this was not what greeted the sisters in 1833. <coughs> for the, you know, by the time it was very poor there. So that building was erected between 1850 and 1853. And of course, the mother house today as well. Once the sisters were set in St. John's and got their schools underway, uh, Irish sisters came over. But also now, Newfoundland women were, were joining the congregation. So they opened up convents in Newfoundland the first in Harbour Grace and the second in Carboneer, to name a few. So convents sprang up all over the island. The sisters arrived here in Stephenville in 1925. Number 13 convent. In Port of Port West, they, uh, it was opened in 1950 and that was number 19 convent. So they're really spreading quickly. Port of Port East didn't open until 1959, and they were number 28. And Piccadilly in 1966, and they were number 34. The
The sisters are still active in this area of Piccadilly, Port of Port West, and Barish Run Brook. The congregation continued to expand, not only in Newfoundland, as was mentioned earlier, but in Toronto, and then Ottawa, and, and Antigua, and Dominica, and of course the sisters are still there. Now our next photo, some people might recognize some of these sisters. That was taken in Stephenville in the 1950s. And you can see most of them were smiling. Monsignor Romney, Romney is there, and Father Ryan. And I know, you know, I can hear people know who's, who's who. Um, we concluded, included this photo because we wanted you to notice that the habit, the sisters here is very similar to the sisters' habits in 1833. Remember the four who came. Today, Presentation Sisters no longer wear this type of habit, but are in modern dress because they were asked by Vatican Council II in the 1960s to reflect on the vision and charism of their foundress. Nana Nagel wanted her sisters to be among the people and serving the poor. Now, in the meantime, other presentation commons opened up. And as you can see here by all the hearts behind us, these are all the countries where uh, presentations, uh, a presentation presence is, and of course was mentioned, the United Nations. <coughs> now, this uh, little patch, a Newfoundland patch, was requested by the sisters in Ireland at Nano's birthplace. Bernice Matta took this on, and she's a great quintist, quiltist, and this is the result. So let's give her a hand. <clears throat> now, if you look at the square, the blue surrounding the island obviously represents the ocean and the journey the sisters took from Ireland to St. John's in 1833. Next, the island itself is covered in the Newfoundland tartan. The rays from the lantern represent the many places the Presentation Sisters taught and today are still living out Nano's vision. This square has been included in a wall hanging with the squares from the other countries of the world. The picture of the squares will uh, also be in a booklet, which will be on display in Ireland for pilgrims to use. Here's the complete quilt. Isn't it beautiful? Now, can you find ours? Yes, it's the first row and then Starting from the left is number four, Little of Land. Yeah, so countries from all over the world, different symbols. Now this concludes our PowerPoint uh, presentation. <coughs> now we're going to have a visit from Nano, who is writing the sisters, encouraging them to continue her dream. My dear sisters, greetings and love to each one of you. I take such delight in knowing how my little dream has evolved right across the globe. And you are a wonderful expression of that dream. And I 
I remember the beginnings, the journey, the fidelity of our God. You see, it has pleased the Almighty to make me succeed when I had everything, as I said, to fight against. I began in a poor, humble manner. And though it pleased the divine will to give me severe trials in this foundation, yet it is to show that it is the work which has not been affected by any human means. I can't say I too much admire your zeal and great trust in the divine providence, which I always looked on as the most settled beginning any foundation of its kind could have. Providence has ordered everything for the best in her regard to keep her for this place. We must think the divine almighty permits everything for the best. You will see with his assistance. Everything promises well. I must say, every disappointment we have had, the Almighty has been pleased to make it turn out to our advantage. Though my impatience ever, every, or very often made me not submit to his divine will, as I ought. But the Almighty is sufficient and will soon make up this loss to us. By degrees, with the assistance of God, we may do a great deal. It's all in the power of the Almighty. We do not know what is best for us, and so ought to be resigned to the divine will. The Almighty makes us of the weakest means to bring about his works. We must leave it to the Almighty. He will do everything for the best in it, I hope. I do not approve of your desponding so much as I perceived in your last letter. Though neither you nor I should not live to see it prosper in our time. Yet, I hope it may prosper hereafter and be of universal service to the kingdom. I comfort myself. With this talk, when I am most dejected at the many disappointments I have met with. With 
God's assistance. Every day promises well. I am so proud of you. With my love and blessing. First of all, I would like to invite the associates to come forward. We're at the end of our presentation, but we have some thank yous, whatever. And uh, so please take each other's hand, each other's hand, and let's have our welcome. Let's please end. I would just have a little bit of light, please. From the sounds of it, we have a pretty good house. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I, uh, when I spoke to, or I had a message from Sister Kay the other night, and I wrote her back, and I said, I thanked her for the wonderful words. And I said, I'm not sure about how much of an audience we are going to have, but I know we're going to have at least 12 sisters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm delighted to see so many people here tonight. And you'll have to excuse my sight here. I, I, I did a light, I think, a little bit. I just had my cataract some be two weeks since I, <laughs> I, I can't, I don't have proper masses right now. But anyway, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank the sisters who are here and all of the people. I want to thank these people who have done me so good in helping me to have this to flow as it did. And I think it flew, it flew pretty well. I had my reservations, <laughs> and I was not so certain sometimes, but you know, I had these little times when things happened I'm going to share with you. I had gone to Corner Brook in, in November for some kind of a test, I can't remember, but I like to go into uh, thrift stores and have a look and see what's there, and sometimes I find stuff and sometimes I don't. But anyway, I, at this time, I went in and I bought a little bag of Christmas decorations. They're only tiny because there's only the two of us, so I just have a little tree and I found this bag of Christmas decorations. And a couple of days later, I took the bag of Christmas decorations, I put a towel on the table and I rolled them out. And what was in the middle of them? A lantern. <laughs> I looked at the lantern and I was in total disbelief. So I had to phone Sister Regina right away and share that. And she said, well, you know, Nana's with you. And uh, so we, we've gone this far. And uh, so this is a, a, an end to, uh, not an end, but I'm so delighted that tonight you're here. And uh, as you know, we do the we do some wonderful things, I think, for the people in who are in need. Um, I should have written this down, and I started, and I figured, well, I'm just going to come off the top of my head now. Uh, but I'm not going to tell any jokes. <laughs> and uh, these people 
like in the last few years, I've been a, a member now, I think 16 years, but we, uh, Betty White, every summer has this wonderful big um, yard sale. And there's always a need in some mission, somewhere in the world that needs money. So we collect money to send to the missions. Last year we sent money to Dominica because they were devastated by uh, Hurricane Maria and there's still some devastation that needs to be fixed down there. And um, we, and as we said, or as was said, we sent this young woman from Zimbabwe to the United Nations. They're so poor that they would never have an opportunity to do something like that if there was no help. So I'm not sure what our objectives will be this year, but we looked at a lot of ways of making nano known and this was one way we thought would be good. And I'm going to share another thing with you. It was only, um, I guess maybe a few months ago, I started to think about myself and things that were happening with me. And one morning, I was just lying in bed, and I was thinking about our children. And we have, the oldest one is Leslie, the second one is Andrew, the third one is Marcel, and the fourth one is Philip. What are those first four initials? L-A-M-P. <laughs> so I said, my God, Nano is with me. So anyway, I, uh, I, is there anything else I need to say? <laughs> you tell me, because I tell you right now, my mind is kind of going in so many different places. But I hope you enjoyed tonight's little presentation. And are we all, um, you okay, Billy? Yes, she's the in the Okay. She's not in the She's on an airplane. Okay, I'm going to say something. I'm supposed to say hello. Okay. Did I come the wrong way? Um, it seems like there was something else I was going to say, but not see it. Oh, yes, I need to thank so many people. I need to thank uh, Wanda for having us here, for allowing us to do this tonight. And uh, her help was so great. And they're so gracious about all of it. I want to thank uh, Michael and Lori and Kevin back there, the technicians. And I also want to thank Michael Fenwick for doing a video for us tonight. <laughs> and I don't know if there's some pictures going to be taken after or whatever, but I certainly, I almost, I knew there was something I was missing. And uh, Anyway, I'm still here, and uh, <laughs> I don't remember if anybody else I missed. If I missed you, it was certainly not my intention. And, I, and uh, our sister, sister Regina and sister Ruth uh, are two of the sisters, I think, that are probably most, um, who know me the best. And uh, I will never forget being invited to become uh, an associate with the presentation group. And it's something that has, I can say it made a difference in my life. It's given me strength in a lot of areas. And I can't say that it's made me fearless, but I fear less. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it gives me the strength to <laughs> we, we just have one more thank you, so if you just give us a moment. It's cooking.
Jimmy, <laughs> that shoe. just a small token of our gratitude. This evening would not have been possible without you. You had a dream, and this dream has come true tonight. You are an amazing woman, and you make Nano proud.